you. I'm glad you could make it. How it is already December 2023 at that, halfway through December. I have quite literally no fucking idea. Where did 2023 go? I lost her. That being said, there are so many books that are like so highly anticipated on my TBR for me. Like I desperately want to have already consumed them inside of my brain and know what has happened. But there are three in particular. Some of these are like my most anticipated reads that just came out. Some of them are my most anticipated reads that they've been on my TBR. It's like everyone's Roman Empire for so long and I just have not been able to get to them yet. So this week, that is the main priority. These are the three books that I am most heavily anticipating reading. I have Powerless by Lauren Roberts, The Enemies to Lovers that everyone and their mom is loving. I have not heard a singular bad review about this book yet. We have Never by Jessa Hastings, which you don't know the self-control that it has taken me to not have already read this book, okay? It's so beautiful. Every time that I see this come up on my TikTok, I'm like, Boop. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to spoil anything. I just like, I need to go in clear-headed and I will be so fucking for real with you. The day that this got here, I did read like 30 or so pages. I just couldn't wait, okay? I'm so excited to go into this and I just cannot, I cannot go into 2024 having not read it. And then... One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I know this is gonna be a five-star read for me, which so I'm going into all of these with really, really fucking high expectations. So I thought we could do a little mood reading, fantasy, winter reading blog type-esque thing with my most anticipated reads. We are most definitely going to be starting with Never because I already started it and I can't get over how beautiful this book is. So let's get into it. Christmas because it is Christmas. This isn't a Christmas video, but it is Christmas for me right now. I am now like pretty far into Never. I'm on page 130, like a third, almost a half. So I feel like I kind of understand what is going on now and I would be lying. But I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed thus far. I mean, the story is good. The baggage claim scene in this, if you've read this book or like seen it on TikTok, rent free, living rent free in my head. The baggage claim scene lives in my brain looking like this cover. Like that is exactly what I wanted out of the series. Okay, like I wanted that from this book. That being said, everything else, I'm not, not eating it up it's good and it's so beautiful like i've annotated can you even tell like 80 percent of the pages that i've read because goddamn just hastings how her brain works she just writes the most beautiful things in the world there's a line that I annotated like a couple pages back that i could find but i'm just gonna summarize for you something that he did made her feel like she was shrugging off a cardigan and putting on a winter coat because that's how warm it made her feel that being said this story is just not it's not i don't think 100 percent my cup of tea and i would also 100 percent be lying if i didn't say that it feels like kind of weirdly sexual i am getting kind of like ugh feelings about some of the sexual things that are talked about in this book not even because of the nature that hook is 22 and he's waiting till she's 18 not even that just like the fact that they're young and like have no idea what they're talking about but they're talking about it a lot it's giving me kind of a weird feeling i won't lie like it's not the end of the world it's still really good but 130 pages in i am getting like kind of like a <laughs> feeling it's basically a love triangle between daphne which is wendy's great great granddaughter wendy her daughter her daughter and then daphne always get taken by peter and this is like further into the future daphne further down the line in the matriarch has now been taken to neverland and she kind of finds that like with peter she's forgetting everything like there's some magic of neverland that is peter and the lost boys she doesn't know why she feels like so attracted and like wants to be around him whenever she's with him but then when she's not with him she's like wait do i hate him and then she's also like, wait, why do I kind of like Hook or Jameson, which is the original Hook's son? Like, why am I supposed to hate him? Because like, I don't hate him.
him and I want to spend time with him. So it's definitely very much giving love triangle, which I don't hate. It's cutesy so far. I just feel like Peter has no idea what's going on at all. And Jameson feels like the obvious choice. We're only 130 pages in, so I have no idea where this is gonna go plot wise. I feel like we haven't gotten very far. Although I will say the whole thing with Neverland is that you forget what time it is or like what's going on or like what you had for breakfast when you're with Peter. So her like kind of having no idea what's going on and like how long she's been there is definitely a plot device. It's not doing what I wanted it to do in some ways. I still love the writing because I don't think Jessica could write anything that I don't love. I'm just not like eating it up in a way that I was honestly pretty sure that I was going to. just like a little bit past halfway now. Like I think I read like 30, 40 pages last night and my tune has changed a little bit. I don't know if it is the fairy ambiance music that I'm listening to because that slaps. I feel like I am very much so in Neverland with Daphne or the plot is just getting way better. Like I feel like we're getting more plot now. Like I feel like there's going to be more of a story that's not just like Daphne and a romance and more of like what is going on with Neverland and like the history of Neverland. It's feeling more interesting. I feel like we're getting more information and more history that's going to lead up to a bigger plot and the story being like even a little bit better and then having just as writing like I'm falling in love day so I look very much like an egg but we're just gonna we're gonna move past that <laughs> never by Jessa Hastings I officially wrapped this up last night which literally the second after I talked to you guys I think I filmed a little clip saying that like 20 pages later it started to get really good it did it got a lot better the first half was like really kind of slow like mundane like I didn't feel like anything was happening other than their like romance which I was expecting there to be more I think like the romance wasn't giving me everything that I needed it to give like the love triangle wasn't giving me a lot in the beginning and like people Peter is hateable like that is not wrong but that's kind of what Jess is known for is doing like kind of hateable lovable characters for lack of a better word the second half was definitely without a doubt so much better my like one gripe with it is that there were so many Neverland questions things that are going on in Neverland and like questions about the world as a whole and like what I feel like is gonna be an overarching plot line because when I look on Goodreads it says never number one so I feel like this is a series I can't imagine it doesn't end on like a cliffhanger but I can't imagine that's how Daphne's story is is supposed to end. I feel like this is a very good book for a first series. Like we got a lot of world building. We got a lot of the love triangle. We got a lot going on and it did give very much so Peter Pan vibes. I never read the original, but I feel like it's giving what I thought Peter Pan would give. And I know a lot of people thought this was going to be like a sweet, cutesy little Peter Pan retelling. That's definitely not what I was expecting in any way, shape or form. I know that the cover is kind of deceiving, but like people were so mad when she got rid of the original covers from Magnolia Park when she signed with her publisher and then she brought them back and then she did one of her original covers for this. And one of the reasons that the publisher didn't want the original cover for Magnolia Parks is because they kind of look like a kid's book, which like, so does this one. That's kind of what her art looks like, but you know from just it's gonna be dark. You okay with that? It's gonna be dark, it's gonna be twisted. You done? So I feel like this was in a lot of ways kind of what I was expecting. Content and like darkness vibes. It wasn't everything that I wanted it to be, that's for sure. Like I thought this was gonna be a renowning five star read. It definitely wasn't. If it is a series, I think it's a very good first in a series, but it's not like, it wasn't as much as I wanted it to be. Jessa Hastings writing was there. Like I can't even, can you even tell? I annotated so much of this and everything baggage claim related in this book, like her mind comes up with the most beautiful, amazing ideas. I would love to take a moment inside of Jessa Hastings brain and just like understand how she does it because like so, so fucking beautiful. Do you feel like after reading this, I understand how people feel when they say that Magnolia Parks is annoying and toxic and they hate it? I understand where your thought process is because I didn't hate it. I saw so much of Daisy and Magnolia in Daphne and like the toxic kind of annoying choices that are made. Like I loved them in Magnolia and I liked them in this, but I totally, I feel like I got to experience firsthand the annoyance that is hating the toxicity in Magnolia Parks. I don't know. And I feel like the love triangle in the story goes where you think it's gonna go 
in a lot of ways, but there being like the supplementary plot, what's going on in Everland, what's gonna be further in the series. I feel like if you were to read this cognitively as a series in the future, this would be an amazing first book. I gave it like a 4.25, 4.5. I love the writing so much. Like the story in itself is like a 3.75, but the writing is like a five. And like, it didn't give me five star feelings by any way, shape or form, but it's five star writing. But if it is a series, I feel like going forward, it could very easily be a five star series, but I'm really glad that I read it and the cover and everything. Like it is what I wanted vibes wise, just not executed the way that I would have loved it to make me feel, if that makes sense. With that one being wrapped up, I did go into Powerless by Lauren Roberts last night. I am like 30 or so pages in. Also, my mom got me colored book tabs, which I've never had. So I've been doing cutesy little purple annotations in this, which I'm loving. That being said, today is December 26th and I was gonna not take the break that this book is demanding that I take, but I'm going to. I hate to break it to you, I need to. This is gonna be in the next video, but I'm really trying to stay in my mood reading vibe and I just know that with this coming, like knowing that this is coming, there's just no world that I'm gonna enjoy Powerless in One Dark Window in the way that I want to, so see you in a bit. completely blind and I am so glad that I did which part one I don't know how none of this was spoiled for me on TikTok like not even the premise of it I reading this am so shocked that this is her first book ever just the way that she describes things I'm 81 pages in I feel so lost in her world like I can genuinely picture the map without having viewed the map which by the way I got a really weird print copy I've literally never seen this before and the first like binding is all like way too high I don't know how that happened there's little where it was supposed to be cut pages. I digress. I am so lost in her world in only 80 pages. Like I feel like I can picture the world and like where Peyton is going so easily and so quickly. And like already Peyton and Kai are so likable. This book basically follows Peyton in a world where this illness, this plague went through and everybody developed magical powers and everybody who did not is being executed or has been executed in the past by the king. And if they find out an ordinary is living in their realm, they'll be executed. Peyton has trained her whole life since her father found out that she was going to be ordinary to pretend to be psychic. And she's growing up in the slums, growing up, stealing all of her food, stealing everything to stay alive. And she is a really, really good thief. And now her father has passed away and she is going about life alone with her best friend, Adina. Adina is the only person in the world that knows that she is an ordinary because if anybody knew she would be killed But they have these games which like trial based fantasies can be really really repetitive And so far this is not feeling repetitive But they have these purging games where they nominate people to compete in the games And if you win you win enough money to get out of the slums and Peyton did obviously not want to go into the purging games Because it is so deadly and people from the slums like practically never ever win them But she has been nominated by the people in her town and because she somehow took out a guy with really good power powers in a fight in front of a lot of people. Where I am right now, she is like just getting to the palace and her and Kai have met briefly, but I can see where everything is going and like I can see where the world is building. I am just shocked by how this is Lauren Roberts' first book. Like it is so captivating and I'm so excited to see where the story goes. I won't lie, I was a little bit worried because this had so much hype, but it's so far exceeding my expectations. <laughs> exactly 100 pages and I've been posting a lot of Goodreads updates while reading this. My Goodreads is linked down below if you guys wanted it. I am like continually shocked by this book. Like I cannot believe that this is her first novel ever. There is so much nuance to her characters and the story is so captivating while also being so romance heavy and so relationship and character heavy. The whole plot is interesting. It makes sense. I'm continually shocked by this book. It does feel really fucking long. Like I feel
feel like I've been reading it for a really long time and I've been reading a lot and just like not getting through it. But that could also be from the fact that I've annotated, I want to say every other page of this book. There's just so many A, crazy, amazing things that I'm just like, I need to annotate that. And so many great romantic quotes. You guys ask me all the time what I annotate. Just whatever the fuck I feel like. It's like the same as like a five star feeling. If I read a line and I'm like, that needs to be annotated, I annotate it. And with a hundred pages left, all I have to say is I would be shocked if this is not a six star read by the time I finish. The last 100 pages have to go so far south for this to not be a six star read. I am loving this. I would recommend this to quite literally everyone and their mom. you will be receiving a bill from my therapist for your damages so keep an eye out for that i don't know how i left this sitting on my tbr for so goddamn long i mean i knew it was gonna be good i didn't know it was gonna be great six stars six stars across the motherfucking board if you are a romantic lover this is for us she wrote this for us i feel like reading this you can tell that she consumes this genre every single trope that you could ask for done to perfection i feel like this is a combination of a gorgeous young girl reading a ton of romanticy and being like i liked this in this book and this in this book and this in that book and being like mesh and then making the romanticy baby child this is so good it is completely ya there's no spice but it's not like a boring ya relationship this didn't give me ya fantasy vibes the banter the storyline the magic system Chef's kiss. I fucking obsessed. I could not, even if I have wanted to, have annotated more of this goddamn book. This is a top read ever, Miss Lauren Roberts. This is a top read ever. It was long. It took me a minute to get through, but I think because I didn't want it to end. How the fuck are we supposed to wait till July? I can't wait till July. And that epilogue where he says, I still don't have the courage. This is the perfect dual POV romance to see. You have not read this. Please, for the love of all that is good, read it. This is in no way, shape, or form real life, okay? I get that. Great. Great fucking fiction. It's what you want as a romanticy reader. A lot of convenient things happen in the plot that like if this were real it wouldn't happen but like obviously because there's magic. Great fucking fiction. That being said, getting into my just as much anticipated. I've had these for about the same amount of time and I've wanted to read them just as badly. It's one dark window time, okay? I started it last night. I'm like 30 pages in. I started it last night so that I could go to sleep because I would not have been able to if I just stayed there. End of that epilogue. Oh, this is immediately intriguing. I went in completely fucking blind. The only thing I know at the time that I'm talking to you right now is that the magic system is driven by tarot cards or something similar to tarot cards. The first 20 pages whatever i am into this i immediately fell asleep i'm so intrigued i have put so many question marks beside things in this book and i understand that if i maybe read the synopsis i wouldn't be utterly confused but like what do you mean in the second page she's walking she hears a voice in her head and then she comes to and she might have eaten poisonous berries i'm so intrigued i'm so intrigued this is also definitely gonna be a way quicker read this is only 370 pages and the font is massive which i'm i'm running with i love it i love to see it this is a another fucking fave. So if I can get another five star, it'll have been worth waiting for. Although I wish I didn't wait. I'm powerless. So we'll see what I think on this. like a 
little bit over a third of the way through right now and I have quite literally not moved a single step since I last talked to you. I have been seated right here and flying through this goddamn book. It just like I need to know which is what I needed in a book right now. I needed something that was going to captivate my attention so that I didn't fall into a powerless reading slump. I am so glad that I went into this completely blind so I'm like hesitant to give you any synopsis at all. I didn't even read the brack. I just knew that it had something to do with tarot cards which they're not tarot cards but it's tarot card inspired. So I'm going to give you like the briefest of briefest descriptions on this. The entire magic system in this deals with these cards that have been created by magic but magic has a price and the price has been paid by this town and there is this illness that goes around and when children get the illness their veins go black and they develop magic and that just cannot do so they are always killed but our main character in this Elsabeth that's why I've been saying her name in my head I'm not 100% confident that's right she was infected 11 years ago but her dad was like the head of the army that was tasked with killing the people that have been infected and he just sent her to live with her aunt and her uncle and the aunt has kept her hidden and kept her illness hidden because they assumed that she has not inherited any magic right from the beginning of the book you know there is something in her head with her that is powerful that is strong and that is keeping her safe but that nobody knows about I'm on my toes about everything there have been so many like little twists her writing is really beautiful it's really easy to follow I feel like we're learning about the magic system and the world building like really well paced like there's enough character development story development and world building all at once for it to like keep your attention and there's so many little cliffhangers at the end of what is seemingly every single chapter I am flying through this goddamn book this is not at all what I was expecting this to be I don't know what I was expecting I don't know if it's the way she's describing it or if the world is just like very easy to understand but this is the most I have seen like a movie in my brain reading a book in a long time like I feel like I picture a little tiny town with the little people moving around in it I honestly think that there is a real world that I don't move from this spot and I finished this entire book literally right now I'm so enveloped in this story I love it One Dark Window is officially done. She is dusted. Is that how you would use that phrase? Is that even right? I don't even want to tell you anything. A single thing. Going in blind, I think, made this such an enjoyable reading experience. I accidentally sat down and read this in a singular day. Pretty much a singular sitting because I could not put it down. It was not what I was expecting in any way, shape, or form. I don't know what I was expecting, but like, it wasn't this. This was like a movie in my head. I did end up rating it like renowning five stars across the board. Definitely like a true, true five star read. I could not put it down. It was so good. And I was not anticipating like 60, 70 pages into this that it was going to be romanticy vibes and it's fully romanticy vibes. It's definitely not gonna be everyone's fantasy cup of tea. It is very like a specific genre. Like it's a darker gothic fantasy-esque vibe, if that makes sense. Feel like you would love this if when I say this sentence, you're like, I didn't know I needed that in my life but I need that in my life. Enemies slash rivals to lovers, found family, gothic fantasy, kind of dark tarot card magic inspired system. It is such a unique magic system and it was the perfect thing to read after reading Powerless because it's such a different vibe. Like I don't feel any hangover towards any of these books because they were so different and it just reminded me that I can read anything and find any enjoyment in anything fictional. I will read anything. It's just like, it's so out of the box. I wasn't imagining this at all, but it was better than what I was imagining. I want to tell you now, but this shocked me. I annotated this baby to shreds. I loved this book so much more than I was anticipating too. Like I thought it was gonna be like a, I respect it. This is like a tattooed on my body kind of love. That was a week of reading my most anticipated fantasy read. These top two being on my TBR forever and this being like my most anticipated end of 2023 release. The fact that Powerless in One Dark Window sat on my TBR for any extended period of time. Next time I tell you guys that I have anticipated reads that I just haven't found the time to read, slap me. Okay, because I will not be held from books like this again And I also trust your opinions like wholeheartedly now because you guys you guys were fucking right I have so many fun reading vlogs planned for on this channel for 2024 I'm so excited that the first one is up and out and with you guys and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye Those books were so good